Welcome to another video in a series about the RISC-V assembly language. The basic set of full-sized instructions is called RV32I on cores with 32-bit registers and RV64I on machines where the registers are 64 bits in size. In previous videos, I described the full-sized instructions that are available on any RISC-V machine, regardless of register size, and I didn't make too much of a distinction between the two. However, there are some subtle differences between the 32-bit machines and the 64-bit machines, and in this video we'll be looking at those differences more carefully. There are some differences and also a few additional instructions for the arithmetic instructions, the shift instructions, the load upper immediate and add upper immediate PC instructions, and the load and store instructions, and that's what we'll cover in this video. The RV32 and RV64 notations refer to the size of the registers. In either case, the number of general purpose registers is the same. There are 32 general purpose registers. The I notation, as in RV32I or RV64I, just means the basic set of full-sized instructions. If the I is not present, it's assumed, since every RISC-V core is implicitly capable of executing the full set of basic instructions. Sometimes you'll see other letters after the RV32 or RV64 to indicate various options, which we'll be describing in future videos. Now, the basic set of instructions works on the entire register, okay? And good examples would be the add and subtract instructions, which perform a 32-bit addition for RV32 machines and a 64-bit addition for RV64 machines. I guess the goal with the basic uh, instructions is that the same code should work regardless of whether you're running it on a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine. Although, there are some minor caveats that we'll need to be in, uh, discussing, some minor differences between the two. And in addition, for 64-bit machines, there are some additional in, uh, instructions that perform 32-bit sized operations that we need to discuss. The basic instruction set contains only three arithmetic instructions, add, subtract, and add immediate. And on a 64-bit machine, these things perform 64-bit addition and subtraction. But we've also got three additional instructions add, subtract, and add immediate, with a W appended. The W stands for word. And these things perform 32-bit arithmetic. What these things do is look at the lower 32 bits in the source values, and they perform the addition or subtraction, store the result in the destination's lower 32 bits, and then they fill the upper 32 bits of the destination register with the sign extension of the value, the result, in the lower 32 bits. Now, I would recommend in all your assembly language programming that you use only signed 64-bit integers unless you have a very, very good reason to use anything else. I mean, even if you're uh, limited on memory space and you're storing the result as a 32-bit word, then you can use a load word instruction before you start your computation to get your values from memory, and a store word when you're done to put the only the 32 bits back into memory. The purpose of these instructions, I think, is to allow languages like C and C++ to be implemented uh, correctly. And in particular, these languages uh, have particular overflow behavior that is expected of 32-bit operations. And so uh, these instructions are used to fill the upper 32 bits with a known value and duplicate the overflow behavior right. Also, um, the, they make it easy to perform a conversion from a 32-bit value into a signed 64-bit value. You can think of these things as performing a 32-bit operation and then automatically or implicitly also doing the sign extension to convert it to a 64-bit signed value. Now, if all you're doing is add, subtract, add, subtract, and multiply, then you can safely use 64-bit arithmetic and just ignore the upper 32 bits because, um, as you may recall, 
uh, the upper 32 bits of an operand will never impact or affect or alter the lower 32 bits of a result. Of course, the lower 32 bits of the operand can have an impact on the upper 32 bits of the, op of the result, but um, the data flows basically right to left for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So it's safe to just do your operations and ignore the upper 32 bits at the end. With division and some other operations like shift, that's not true. The upper 32 bits of the operand do become significant. But uh, uh, in summary, I recommend you just use the 64-bit signed uh, arithmetic operations and leave these for use by the C or C++ compiler. The basic instruction set contains six shift operations, and these are shift left logical, shift right logical, and shift right arithmetic, and then the same ones again, where the second operand is an immediate value instead of a register. And the extension from 32-bit machines to 64-bit machines is very natural. In a 32-bit machine, the shift amount when it's in a register is taken from the lower five bits and we ignore the upper bits. And in the 64-bit machine, we take the shift amount from the lower six bits. The immediate value for 32-bit machines is between 0 and 31. And for 64-bit machines, it's between 0 and 63. So that's a natural extension. We've also got six additional shift instructions. They have the same names with a W appended. And these would be used if you want to perform 32-bit shifting on 32-bit values, uh, shifting in the appropriate amount, not using the upper 32 bits. So uh, these will just operate on the lower 32 bits, performing a 32-bit shift. And the result will be placed into the destination register and the upper 32 bits of the destination will be set to the sign extension of the 32-bit result in the lower order word of the destination register. And furthermore, the uh, shift value would be restricted to only 5 bits or uh, uh, 0 to 31. So we would ignore the uh, sixth bit in the, destination, in the uh, second operand register. So these could be used to implement uh, shifting as it would be required by the C or C++ compiler for 32-bit operation for 32-bit values. Remember that the load upper immediate instruction takes a 20-bit immediate value and it shifts it to the left 12 bits and places the result in a destination register. On a 64-bit machine, it works the same way, except there's one important proviso or caveat, and that is that the result is sign extended from 32 bits to 64 bits. That is, the upper 32 bits of the destination are set to be a sign extension of the low order word. If your addresses are less than or equal to 32 bits, that is, if you're dealing with a 4 gigabyte address space or less, then there's no problem. The upper bits of the address are going to be ignored anyway, and you don't care about the sign extension. However, if your address space is larger than 4 gigabytes, then I think you need to be very, very careful with this instruction. Because with any address that's greater than 31 bits, that is, it has the sign bit set, or it's an address uh, 2 gigabytes or larger, then um, you're going to have upper bits in the uh, upper word of the address being set. And so you might not be getting the address that you expect. So watch out there. So the add upper immediate to PC instruction is very similar, except it computes a PC relative address. The immediate value is shifted, and then it's added to the current value of the program counter, and the result is placed in the destination register. The only thing with uh, the 64-bit version is that the immediate value is first sign extended to 64 bits. So this is naturally going to work very well and support PC relative addressing as long as the offset from the current program counter is plus or minus 2 gigabytes. Uh, now you're probably not going to be using either the load upper immediate or the add upper immediate to PC instruction directly. Instead, these two instructions are going to be used by the assembler and linker whenever they need to uh, translate pseudo instructions and instead, you're going to just use pseudo instructions and not worry too much about either of these two instructions. Now take a look at the load and store instructions. 
Here are the load and store instructions for any 32-bit RISC computer. The load instructions go to memory, fetch some data, and move it into a destination register, while the store instructions move the data from register RS2 into memory. And for the load instructions, we can either load 1, 2, or 4 bytes into the destination register. And for 1 and 2 byte loads, we have a choice between signed and unsigned. So by default, the upper 3 bytes in a load inst byte instruction would be filled with the sign extension, whereas with a load byte unsigned, those 3 bytes would be 0 filled. And likewise with a half word load. With a load word instruction, we're moving four bytes into the register, and that fills the entire register, so we only have one load word instruction. And with the store instructions, we can store one, two, or four bytes from the register into memory. Now, with a 64-bit machine, we have several additional instructions. We have uh, two load instructions and a store instruction. So we now have a load double word, which goes to memory and fetches eight bytes and fills the register. And now with the load word uh, instruction, we have two variations. One will fill the upper four bytes with the sign bit, that's the default, and the other will, f the load word unsigned, will fill the upper four bytes with the zero ex uh, bits. And for the store double word, we can store eight bytes from RS2 into memory. For other instructions in the basic instruction set, the register size doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're executing on an RV32 or RV64 machine. There are no differences. The logical operations like AND, OR, and exclusive OR are bitwise, and if you want to ignore the upper 32 bits, that's fine. For set if less than and set if less than unsigned, these will work even if your value is only a 32-bit value, as long as it has been sign extended. And by the same logic, the test and branch instructions will work just fine, regardless of whether you're comparing 64-bit values or 32-bit values, as long as the 32-bit values are sign extended. Even the unsigned comparisons will work properly for sign extended values. For some pseudo instructions like jump, call, and return, well, these will be compiled and translated by the assembler into jump and link and jump and link register instructions, and those two instructions work the same way, so there's no issue with those. For fence, the system call, and the break instructions, uh, the register size doesn't matter. Actually, I haven't so far talked about fence or the break instruction in the earlier videos, but uh, these work the same way because the registers don't come into play, and I hope to describe those in a future video. Okay, that wraps up my discussion of the basic instruction set and the differences between the RV32 and the RV64 standards. In particular, we saw that the add and subtract and the shift instructions were very naturally extended to operate on 64-bit values. And we also saw the addition of several instructions that were needed to properly mimic the overflow behavior and these would be used by the C compiler for 32-bit quantities. We also saw that there were a couple of new load and store instructions to load and store 8-byte quantities to and from memory. And I also talked a little bit about the load upper immediate and the add upper immediate PC instructions and how they would work in a 64-bit environment. The remaining instructions saw no changes. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.